Isashi Owochi is dead. Yutaka Yokokawa has been discharged from hospital. Only one person of the trio remains battling for their lives, Masato Shinohara, and his struggle is only half finished. Fate will come cruelly to the forgotten victim. On New Year's Day 2000, Shinohara was indeed healthy enough to leave the room in a wheelchair, and was escorted to the garden of the hospital in said wheelchair. Such was his significantly improved condition, gifted by skin grafts. Shortly after this, Shinohara lost the ability to open his eyes. This proved a matter of discomfort and annoyance to Shinohara, as shortly thereafter, he also lost the ability to move his hands and feet. It became initially a source of discomfort, and then something he hated. Further issues arose shortly thereafter, as on the 4th of January, it was confirmed that the DNA in Shinohara's remaining skin, mostly present on his face, had been destroyed, like Hisashi Wuchi's had been. Previously, the fresh layer of skin underneath the burnt layer had appeared as much healthier. However, now it too was peeling off, and leaving behind exposed bloody tissue. This was covered by painful dressings that stuck to his flesh and were intensely painful. Despite this, the transplanted skin on Shinohara's legs and arms had taken well and was spreading. By the 12th of January, the pain in Shinohara's mouth was such that he could no longer be fed orally. Instead, he was fed through a tube nasally, the way they attempted to do so in a wuchi before. Unlike him, the digestive tract was intact. This was able to sustain Shinohara for the coming days and things appeared way on to recovery for the exposed man. At this point, nearly 100% of the grafted skin on his right leg and 85% of the left leg had bound completely, showed good circulation, and was covering the exposed tissue. On the 18th of January, Shinohara entered rehabilitation. This was simple rehabilitation, of course, as any complex movement could damage the grafts. It primarily consisted of standing up and sitting down, as well as the movement of his fingers to improve their usage. Antibiotics were no longer administered commencing January 20th, resulting in intense disinfectant application to keep infections from entering the body, and causing significant damage to a recovering patient. Joints in the legs were improving, however the right leg joint was not improved sufficiently enough, resulting in intense pain from standing up and rendering walking impossible. On January 27th, day 120 of treatment, Shinohara underwent a third skin graft operation, this time to his face. These covered the head injury nearly entirely. Following this, Shinohara continued rehabilitation. Blood loss reduced considerably. And after this, skin grafts were transplanted repeatedly to his midsection, upper arms, and lower back. Unfortunately, February and March proved to be months of suffering for Shinohara, as much of his body began to fail, in a way similar to that of Isashi Wuchi. He never suffered from extreme diarrhea or skin hemorrhages, although his fate was equally painful. Despite the fact that Shinohara's condition was as equally perilous, medical reports ceased, and Shinohara was left forgotten by many in history. Initially, it started with fibrosis of the skin, Fibrosis is caused by fibre produced in an organ in excess, resulting in the organ hardening and ceasing to function properly. Shinohara, who could previously not move his hands or feet, was now beginning to lose the ability to use his arms or legs, and the pain in the joint of his right leg worsened, as more and more of the skin lost its elasticity. Shinohara remained fully conscious. This fibrosis was presumably brought on by a number of factors, including the excessive healing of the tissue and the inflammation of the body tissue beneath. Regardless of the factors, their consequence was that Shinohara's condition had now suddenly worsened. Even new transplanted skin was quickly turning fibrous, including to the face and upper body. As February ended, Shinohara's condition worsened. On February 21st, Bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract began. It started in the upper intestines, and then spread into the stomach, to the point he began requiring blood transfusions. 
feeding through the nasal tube ceased and was performed instead through an intravenous tube. At the start of March, Shinohara caught MRSA. This was followed by a number of complications. The first of these was oropharyngeal mucosal damage, in which the mucus of the mouth began to wear away and droop, forming painful ulcers. The second was obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, in which during sleep, Shinohara stopped breathing. Another complication was cytomegalovirus. It resulted in a sore throat and inflammation of the glands in his mouth, as well as aching muscles. But perhaps the worst consequence of MRSA was the onset of pneumonia. Shinohara's lungs were filling with fluid, and this was reducing his ability to breathe. To compensate, doctors had to perform a procedure they dreaded, one that would separate Shinohara from his friends and family, as well as recovery. A few days after Shinohara developed pneumonia, the medical team cut his trachea, and linked his breathing to an artificial respiration apparatus. With this, Masato Shinohara was bedbound, unable to move due to skin fibrosis, and linked up to machines to prevent his breathing from becoming erratic or ceasing altogether as he slept. Again, he was still fully conscious. For the duration of the hospital stay, his treatment had been assisted by medical staff who had treated his Hisashiwuchi. However, consulting the Radiation Emergency Medicine Information Network presented the idea that transfer to the University of Tokyo's intensive care unit was the best move for Shinohara, and the medical team treating Shinohara complied. On April 10th, 2000, Shinohara was transferred to the intensive care unit of the University of Tokyo Hospital. Following this, a series of incidents plagued the critically ill man, now under the care of Meikawa, and the same team who treated Hisashi Wuchi. A week after transfer, Shinohara's kidney function ceased, and so Shinohara was forced to undergo continuous hemodialysis. Liver function began to decline too, as did his lung functions. Little has been recorded about Masato Shinohara and his treatment. However, we do know this. On the morning of April 27, 2000, 211 days after exposure, Shinohara became unable to breathe. With fluid and blood building up in his lungs, and his skin unable to stretch to allow for breathing, his chest could not expand, and so no air entered or left the lungs. No oxygen was getting to his blood. Masato Shinohara was still asleep at the time, and so he passed away quietly at 7.25am on the 27th of April, 2000. During the autopsy, Shinohara's skin was cut open, to view the progress of transplanted skin. To the shock of everyone there, Shinohara's skin crunched as the incision was made. Meikawa, who was present in the room, shuddered. He had never heard such a noise in a dissection before. He finally realised the powerlessness of humans in treating radiation sickness. Other notable points in the autopsy were the extreme damage to Shinohara's torso, and intestinal tract, and almost the entire depletion of cells in his bone marrow. Hisashi Wuchi is dead. Masato Shinohara is dead. Yutaka Yokokawa has been discharged from hospital. The medical battle is now over. The court battle is yet to begin. <laughs>